There are four things that will save your life in a sword fight or any other kind of fight. But you can't have just one or two of them. You have to have them all. Sometimes we say that the word combat has four C's in it. The first C stands for competence, because competence comes first. It's the critical foundation that the other C's are built on. Competence means you know your skills. You don't have to be able to do everything possible with a sword, but you do have to be able to do whatever is necessary with a sword. You must have an adequate and appropriate repertoire of actions that you can do perfectly, and you must be able to apply those skills in all strategic positions. It's better to have one perfect move than to have a hundred imperfect moves. Now, what does that mean exactly? What skills? Well, first, foundational skills. Balance, line, focus, and distance. Then technical skills, the correct mechanical execution of the various thrusts and parries and footwork and so on. Then tactical skills, put the point on the target, feel the steel, take your time, keep your distance, and continue the phrase. And finally, strategic skills, offensive outfighting, offensive infighting, defensive outfighting, and defensive infighting. The secret to competence is simple. Practice. Repetition. More repetition. And then for a change of pace, still more repetition. A move is yours when you can execute it without conscious intention. Your brain perceives the right cue. Your body performs the right response. No need to think about it. The second C stands for confidence. All the skill in the world is worthless if you're afraid to execute it. It's not enough to know the skill. You have to know you know the skill. You have to know you have the right skill. And you have to know that the skill works. Now, I'm not talking about egotism. I'm talking about objective evaluation. No brag, just fact. These are the moves I do well. Those are not. These are the moves I can hit anybody with. Those are not. Like a good carpenter, you have to know what tools you have in your toolbox. You can't use a tool you don't know you have. It's not enough to know. You have to know you know. <laughs> you know your abilities and you know your limitations. Confidence without competence is all bluff. And there are some people you cannot bluff. You build confidence with success. That means you execute your moves correctly and successfully under increasingly difficult conditions, which means against stronger and stronger opponents. This is the purpose of the combat lesson. It's also the role of sparring, to test your skills against determined and skillful opponents, to prove to yourself that you own those skills. The combination of competence and confidence leads to control. Because you know your skills, and you know you know your skills, you can make choices. And tactics is all about choices. Choices of time, choices of distance, when and where, where to be and when to be there. You can't make choices if you don't have control. If you don't have control, your opponent will be making the choices and you'll just be reacting. And action beats reaction. I'll give you an example I use with my students all the time in combat lessons. It kind of drives them crazy. I know exactly how far and how fast my student can lunge. I know exactly how fast I can parry cart from a guard of octave. Because I know those two things, I also know exactly how close I can get and still be able to parry their attack. I know that there's a point where I'm too close to parry in time. 
I know that there's a point at which I'm so close that they won't be able to resist making an attack. I have to make the latter happen before the former. I use this exercise to teach my guys how to not walk into an ambush. Be patient. Be circumspect. Be suspicious of Greeks bearing gifts. I can only do this effectively because my competence and confidence allow me to be the locus of control of my own behavior, and as a result, the locus of control of my opponent's behavior. My goal in this exercise is for my students to stop falling for it. I want them to recognize it as a trap. I want them to be the locus of control of their own behavior and not allow me to be. You get in your car. You're going to go for a drive. You put it in gear. You're not going anywhere until you take your foot off the brake. You can put your foot on the gas pedal. You can put your foot on the brake. Your car is designed so you can't do both at the same time. Uh, try it. Let me know how that works out. Take your foot off the brake and put the gas pedal to the floor. That's commitment. Commitment means you don't do anything in a half-assed manner. You give it the full donkey, like Don Quixote. You can't swim by getting halfway into the pool. You can't skydive by jumping halfway out of the plane. You burn your ships like Cortez. You plant your spear like a dog soldier. You throw away your scabbard. You quit your square job and you say, I love you, right out loud. But commitment lives in the present moment. You're fully committed to whatever is and whatever you're doing in this moment. Then the next moment comes, things change. You change with them. And now you're fully committed to whatever you're doing in this moment. See, commitment is spiritual. It's not commitment to a particular technique or tactic. It's a commitment to a particular destination, not a particular route. If you stay with one thing, even though it isn't working because conditions have changed, that's not spiritual commitment. That's mental, emotional overcommitment. That's your ego talking. You know, that was Einstein's definition of insanity, to keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. Commitment is remaining focused on the destination while remaining infinitely flexible regarding the exact route. You can change the route from moment to moment without ever changing your destination. Look, if we cross blades, my destination is to touch you. That's my focus. That's my commitment. If I do it with a straight attack, that's fine. If I do it with a disengage or a one-two or a, a counter repost by priest affair, that's fine too. It's all the same to me. I'm not invested in taking a certain route. I'm committed to reaching my destination. When you have commitment, you're like water flowing down a mountain stream. You adapt perfectly to every rock, stone, and pebble you encounter. But you keep going, and you keep flowing. Here's one of those paradoxes a fighter learns to live by. You take control by letting go. Like an archer, you aim, and then you release the arrow. You can't hit the target if you keep holding on to the arrow. But there's something more. It's more than knowing your skills. It's more than knowing you know your skills. It's trusting your skills. Let me tell you a quick side story. My lady was in the saddle and she was having a hell of a time trying to get this pony to move out. You can't steer what isn't moving. They were both getting pretty frustrated. So I, I took a cone and set it up on a barrel that wasn't doing anything important. And I told her to look at that cone. Focus on it. Focus on it. Don't take your eyes off of it. Now ride over and go get it. Well, she rode right over there and grabbed that cone. And she, was, she was amazed. She thought I was pretty slick. But it wasn't me. When she focused her conscious mind on that cone, 
her subconscious mind took over and made her body do the riding skills she already knew how to do. My horse was able to understand what she was asking because it was simple and clear and not getting lost in a lot of static. See, sooner or later, at some point, you have to focus on the mission and trust your skills. So you'd better have learned them. So you've got competence, confidence, control, and commitment. Now you're all set, right? Wait a minute. What if your opponent also has competence, confidence, control, and commitment? What then? Well, in that case, this will be the best fight you'll ever know. Now, in saying that, I don't want to give you the wrong impression. I'm not saying fighting is a good thing. I'm not encouraging you to fight. Quite the opposite. Any fight you can possibly avoid, you should avoid. You don't train to fight the fights you can avoid. You train to fight the fights that you cannot avoid. But look, if you've ever been to Vegas, or even if you just kind of like the music, maybe you know that if you don't bet anything, you can't win anything. And how much you win depends on how much you bet. No bet, no payoff. Small bet, small payoff. Big bet, big jackpot. There's an African proverb that says there's no great honor for a lion to slay a jackass. The lion is put to the test when he faces another lion. An opponent who has equal competence, confidence, control, and commitment is going to draw out of you the best that you've got because the stakes are as high as they can get. When two perfect fighters engage, either they both live or they both die. Literally, in the case of a real fight, or psychologically, in the case of a play fight. But once you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody who makes you give everything you've got, every fight after that will seem anticlimactic and pointless. Competence, confidence, control, and commitment. These are the four things that will save your life, no matter what kind of fight you have to fight.